How y'all doing? Tom back again. More programming content. Yay! Uh, so today we're going to talk about how to run external commands in Go. And what I mean by external commands is basically why you're, say, you have a Go program running and maybe you want to use another program that's on your computer. So if we're in like a Unix environment, let's say that, I don't know, you want to run LS for some reason to, to see what files are in a directory, uh, you could use the, um, the thing I'm about to show you in order to do things like that. Um, in particular, the reason I know how to do this now is because whenever I was rewriting some of my video editing stuff in Go, um, I was making use of another shell script to um, get some information to do the video editing processing. Uh, but uh, so whenever I was doing my Go program, I still had to use the script. Oh my God. Away, um, and uh, I this is how I figured out how to do it. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. Um, uh, while you're watching, if you enjoy the video at any point, be sure to drop me a like, subscribe, and with that, let me show you the goods. So, this is the package you uh, that I would I use at the very least to run the external commands. Um, it's the execute package and go, um, and it has a it's pretty small, but it's it's pretty straightforward. And if you read a description of what it is, it does exactly what I mentioned. Um, runs external commands, uh, wraps OS, start, start process to make it easier to remap the standard in and standard out and also the errors. Um, connect pipes and do other things. Um, it does mention that unlike the system library, uh, it does not intentionally invoke a shell and therefore does not do things like expand like glob patterns or like stars and stuff like that. If you need to do that, you would have to specifically invoke like a shell or something when you run the commands. Uh, also do note, it says, note the examples in this package assume a Unix system. They may not run on Windows. Oh no, poor Windows people. Go good. Uh, so let's take a look at the actual command struct because that's probably one of the first important things. So this is the struct that you'll create whenever you're going to run an external command. Um, the first thing is the path to the um, executable you want to run. This is just a slice of args that you also pass in. Uh, this is the environment variables that it inherited and will use when it's running. Uh, this is the present working directory of the command. And then you'll notice the um, standard in, standard out, and standard error all um, use the interfaces from the IO package, so IO reader and IO writer. So you can technically hook these up with anything that actually implements IO writer or IO reader. So you could put something else there to route the output somewhere else if you wanted. And then here's some extra information like the state of the process, uh, what process is this running from, stuff like that. So how do you make this command? Well, you just, there's, there's a command function that will create one for you. Um, and you'll see it takes the name, which is basically the the name of the program you want to run, or the path to it, actually. And you'll notice args is what's called a var var I you say this, variadic argument, which means um, after the name, you can basically give it any number of strings that'll be kind of added on to it to build out the entire command. Uh, this is typically where you put in things like flags or arguments and things like that. Uh, cause here's, here's an, where is it? Uh, yeah, here's an example of creating a command. So it's creating a command for a program called TR, whatever that is. And it's having two options set. It has a A dash Z and a capital A dash Z. Um, and then it's, uh, creating a new reader. And you can see this is how you can like attach uh, the different like standard and standard out to it and then it's running it and then it's doing all this stuff So that's how you create it now. How do you actually use it? Uh, there's just a couple ways the two main ways are these two there's run and there's start They sound similar, but do different things uh, run will start the command and wait for it to complete Start will start it, but it will not wait for it to complete uh, so start, I used run or this other thing up here, uh, combined output, 
uh, during my implementation. Start sounds like it'd be better if you wanted to hand the command off to like a, a go routine or something. And if you're maybe wondering, well, how do you actually wait for it to finish? Well, there's another method specifically for that called wait. Uh, wait waits for the command to exit and waits for any copying to standard in and standard out and error. Uh, command must have been started by a start. So let's actually show you what this looks like. So we're, I just opened up a little file here, it's empty. Um, I figured maybe this was easier than doing what I was doing before, which was like showing you how I'd use this in a script because it might be kind of confusing. I figured it'd be easier just to do this. So we want to create a command. So what do we, uh, what do we want to run? Maybe, uh, I guess going off what I mentioned earlier, let's, let's just run ls, okay? Um, so we're gonna say command equals as execute dot command. And if you recall, the first argument is the name of the program that you want to run of the of the executable. So ls, and then you can pass in any arguments. So let's just say um, in the case of ls, if you don't pass in anything, it assumes the uh, current directory you're in. But it, just for the sake of it, we could just also say well. We'll specifically say, I want to look at the current directory that I'm in. Okay, so we've created the command. So how do we run it? So let's do it the way that I was typically doing it, which is you would, um, you do, uh, I think it also, there was actually an easier way to do it than the way I did it. I didn't realize, which is output. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. so because you see, you could do this in a one-liner where you say, maybe you don't actually want to like save the command. Uh, I, I, I explicitly wanted to save the command to do other things to it before I ran it. And you will see, you can just kind of do like a one-liner here where you just create it and then instantly run it and get the output. And it'll give you the standard out and standard error. So let's, let's try that approach. So um, you won't even store a command. We'll have out and we'll have error equals I see my thing going nuts again. Give me one second. Kill all Compton. I see Compton going crazy. Okay, thank you. Uh, so it'd be execute dot command. We're gonna execute ls. Oops, ls on this current directory, and we're gonna just run it and get the output. So what this will do is it'll create the command and instantly run it, and give you the standard out and error. So as with anything in Go, if you have an error, you have to check first. So if error does not equal nil, uh, let's print out log.fatalf, um, or not this error, um, command did not run successfully. Let's do that. And then otherwise, maybe we'll just do fmt printf um, output, from ls is this, and we're gonna pass out. Should be fine, yeah. So let's run this and see what happens. So I think this is the only file in this directory, so it should only just give us this. So do go run, yeah. Output from ls is main go. Uh, so let's, let's make sure this is actually right. Um, let me go to, the directory I'm actually in was an example, golang. Let me just make a file here, touch uh, test.go. Yeah, we'll call that. Now, if we run this again, you should see two. Uh, oops, I made, made a bite of burp. Uh, cannot load package. Why is, oh, I probably shouldn't have called that go. I probably should just call it something else. Okay. It was trying to run the test.go. <laughs> That's why what the problem was. So you'll see now it says main go and test go. Like, uh, so let's maybe add some extra arguments. Like, let's say we want to do the, um, what are some arguments you usually pass in? Like, uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, dash ls, or was it dash l? Let's just do dash l. And so, oops, I broke it now. Okay. So let's try this, see what you get. So there you go. That's usually when you run LS, you use it with something like this anyway, so you can get more information about the files. 
So what else can we do here? So instead of um, output, we can do, let's just do run. Run, I think, doesn't even give you the output. It just tells you whether there is an error. Uh, so this would be more helpful if you wanted to run something that you don't necessarily care what the output of it, of it is. You just wanted to know whether, it, for some reason, it didn't run successfully. So let's maybe say, um, what would be a good one for that? Uh, I, I, in my particular, I would probably use this if I was using, say, like one of my FFmpeg scripts. Because usually I don't really care about the output. I just, I just run it. Um, so the way I would, the way you would do that is, let's see, let's just create another, uh, let's see, command. You could technically do this as a one line or two, I suppose. I don't see why you couldn't. But you would just get an error. So you'd be like, execute dot command. Oh, that would be a good program to run. Mm, that you don't care about the output. Maybe let's remove the test.go file. So let's re run remove. And the target is test.go. Yeah. And we'll do run. So let's check if error. Actually, I don't need that to be that. Let's check if error does not equal nil. Or actually, let's do if error is nil. Yeah, let's do that. If error, that's not how you type that, Donnie. Okay. Let's do that. Then we'll do fmt.print line. I need to go back and put a new line there. Um, file removed successfully. Let's, let's try that. So let me go over here, make sure that I didn't derp. Okay, it's still here. Um, so let's run this. Run these. So you see file removed successfully. Um, and just to make sure, uh, let me see, what else can we do here? Um, let's do else uh, print F um, problem. I forget if this will actually have the standard out I think usually when you get the error it just tells you what the error code was so to say that um, there was a problem removing the file because if I run this again it will it will error because the file shouldn't exist anymore and well actually if we run this again you will see that the output of ls there is no test.go file now yeah so you see there's only main.go and it says there was a problem moving the file, meaning it's not there anymore. So, okay, I guess the last good example would be, let's do the whole thing where you start a process, but don't, but, but you have to wait for it to finish. And just to demonstrate, we'll see what happens if you don't wait for it to finish. So we'll say, um, what is start? Start just turns error, okay. So we're gonna do error equals, Execute dot command. I can't type the day. Okay, thank you. Uh, what do we want to run? Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Let's just run ls again. Uh, dash l and do start. I think I should be right. So start. Uh, start return successfully. The C process field. The wait method will return to exit code and release associated resources area. So let's, um, let's see, FMT, or no, wait. What am I looking for? Standard out. Actually, how would you, I wonder how you'd actually read this this way. So I would want like what, out equals, um, Oh, my brain is derping. Okay, let's do it this way. Let's do cmd equals uh, execute dot command ls dash l and then not run it yet. Um, and then we'll do this will just be cmd dot start. Oops, what did I do? I don't know. Oops. 
Now, I guess theoretically speaking, if I don't wait for this to finish, this might not actually print out anything. I guess it depends on how... F it, this, if you don't wait for it, you're basically introducing a, what's that called, a race condition, where sometimes it'll finish before you get the chance to read standard out, sometimes it won't. Uh, the proper way to do it is for you to like wait specifically for the output to be done. Uh, so I guess let's do what CMD, uh, was it standard in? Is that what you would do? Or I forget, uh, there's, there's some way in Go to like read the output. Um, my brain's derping right now, but uh, uh, let's see. I think, so I think uh, maybe something we could check is if this started but has not finished, error should be nil, I think. So let's do it with something that can fail. Let's do the whole uh, remove thing again. Yeah, let's do that. Test.go, oops, .go, yeah. Uh, if error does not equal nil, uh, print, print line, file not found. So I, I think theoretically speaking, that shouldn't work the way we expect it to, I think. There was a, yeah, yeah so, you see that it did not say file not found, even though we know it should have said file not found. Uh, that's because when it checked this, this was not done running yet. So I think the proper way for it to actually give you what you were expecting it to see was you would specifically have to wait. Yes. Command the return error is nil if the command runs. Has no problems copying it exits with a zero. If the command fails or doesn't compile, complete compile. Doesn't complete successfully, the error is of type exit error. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay, so. So doing it here this way actually won't really give you anything, I think. Uh, I guess you could just do this. And then you'd want error equals cmd.wait. So, so you'll notice that this is the equivalent of just running like output or run or combined output. But uh, this, I think, would be more helpful if you're kind of wanting to spin up multiple c processes and then maybe do something with the output or you just want to like run a bunch of things all at once. Let's see, if we run this, this should actually give us what we're expecting it to say, I think. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Wow, you, I didn't put the new line there. Let me um, uh, go over here. Oh. That's that's right. I put print f print line. Let's try it now. Yeah, file not found. So that time it actually waited for the prog the, the the process to actually finish, uh, so that we could actually proper properly check the error. Uh, so that's all I really had to show about this. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to run other like external programs and go. Uh, and there's not, there's not really anything complicated to it. It's really just uh, one other thing that might actually be useful is if you go back here and we go to the start, there is a function here called look path. And so the searches for an executable named file in the directories named by the path environment variable. So theoretically, this would work in Unix systems and in, say, Windows, because Windows has a path variable too. You just don't really hear it talked about much. Um, and it says if it contains a slash, it'll try to run directly and not consult it. So what I think that means is if it has uh, a slash in it, it assumes that you're giving it like a direct like uh, path to look for it instead of looking in the path variable. Uh, so let's actually see what that looks like. So we've been running this like ls command. Let's see what happens when you look it up. So is that a string? What is that? Is a string or an error? Okay. So let's say um, path error equals was that execute dot look look path look path look path and we'll look at for ls uh, if error uh, does not equal nil uh, we'll say oops uh, fmt print line unable to find ls in path. Uh, then we're going to, let's just, let's just see what it actually is. So we'll see FMT, FMT, uh, yeah. 
FMT print F a path to LS is whatever this is. And it's path. So let's let's try that and see what it says. I don't actually know. Path to LS is a user slash user slash bin slash LS. That's the path to LS. Actually, I actually before I started this video, I actually didn't even know that was a thing. I actually need to put that in my editing script to find the path for FFmpeg and FFplay. Yeah, that's, I should definitely do that. So there you go. That's all I had to show y'all about executing external commands in Go. Um, if you liked the video, be sure to drop me a like, subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Uh, if you want to follow me on other social media, I got links down there, mostly for Discord and Twitter. Uh, if you want to support the channel, and I love you so much, I also got some links down there below that for as well. And with that, y'all come on back now, and I'll see you next time.